Uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with my work, but um, if you've seen my work in recent years, this doesn't look like my work. Um, what I've shown since I started showing the gallery maybe 10 years or so ago was uh, colorful paintings, sort of photo-derived, and maybe even sort of a collage aesthetic, um, layering of images, um, and um, often images sort of uh, juxtaposed in sort of uh, dialogue with one another. Um, in more recent years, I've been making paintings of cosmograms, um, pictures of sort of a total universe and everything in it, and uh, trying to sort of think about that, a, a picture of everything from the divine down to the most base sort of material things. And I've um, uh, been painting sort of along those lines, thinking along those lines probably forever, um, as long as I've been painting, um, and um, hitting various walls and painting myself deeper and deeper into a kind of a <laughs> corner uh, to where I felt like I was um, running out of moves. So uh, at first it was gestural painting and it was sort of expressive and it was about, uh, it was sort of autobiographical and then I became really disinterested in the idea of autobiography and talking about myself. It became very, very uninteresting and then it was, uh, it was sort of the figure in relation to an idea of, um, of the collective unconscious, the archetypes, um, thinking about comparative religion, and then that seemed very, very general. Um, and then it, it sort of it moved from one thing to another until I got into this, like I say, this very limited kind of format of, of selecting photographs, making relationships between them, and um, trying to say something about how far I was from uh, other people and from um, a spiritual life. How, how, how distant I had I felt from my own sort of interior spiritual uh, whatever that is that's important to me, um, and and just the way that I walk around bumping around in the world. I felt it was just these were paintings about how clumsily and how distantly I was moving away from what I thought of as important to myself. So that's what the paintings became more and more about. The story so, sort of starts to show up in my head. I'm, um, just sort of paying attention to it. And it's a story about uh, a figure who goes out, where is she? Uh, who goes out um, into this dark night and she hears a call and it's not a, a word or something like that, it's just this sort of a call. And she goes out and, um, and there, this voice inside of her is in agreement with this thing that's outside of her. And um, she's, she has this idea to take the leaves from the trees and to weave uh, this dress of Mobius strips. Yeah? This right here. Yeah. Yeah, it sort of goes around top. Uh, so she has this idea to weave this dress of Mobius strips. Um, Mobius strips of these. So, um, you take a, a two-sided thing um, and then you make a one-sided thing out of it so that if you would draw on this side of this sheet of paper you would go over the entire thing before you come back to the beginning and you come right back to where you started you'd have drawn on what you would have thought was both sides. So this, instead of a two-sided, uh, a thing where you, can, where you can think about me in relation to how alienated I am from something else or, or me in relation to uh, like the difference between heaven and earth or whatever it is, it's this one-sidedness. And so that became this, she took these leaves and made these things, uh, made a dress out of that and wove that for herself as her garment, which is, uh, which I later started to think of, not at the time, but later, I thought, well, this is a sort of platonic idea of emanationism, um, this, uh, this weaving of different, um, different forms that we start out at the sort of the monad and we move outward, outward, ever outward until we get to the hem of the garment. And then uh, in the story, um, the very last one breaks. Um, and that's, and that, so then we have this one thing that sort of falls apart, falls away from, and becomes um, um, 
this place where this whole narrative takes place. Uh, so there's one side that's sort of uh, facing up into the moonlight, lit, and uh, and you know it's it, it has light coming up on it, and the other side is is sort of in shadow and chaos, facing down into the darkness, and that becomes sort of the setting for the story. Um, and then a lot of those sort of ideas about uh, cosmograms, cosmologies, end up happening sort of within this strip, so that at one point it becomes sort of a spiral, um, and we pass through sort of different realms on the way to the interior. And so it becomes sort of, we start as a going out into this field, an outward journey, and we end up on an inward journey to a center, which lead, leads to a weaving back into that garment. Because I've been drawing, uh, I've been painting from photographs and been ignoring any kind of actual craft or ability to put something together on my own without leaning on this crutch of photography for so long, I didn't have any idea how to draw anymore. Um, I was just, I have a projector, so I don't have to know how to draw anymore. And I hadn't drawn anything um, where, where I had to sort of sustain an idea and carry it through a body of work in a very long time. So my, my paintings were becoming more and more um, clear and focused and specific, and I had a sort of a style that was sort of carrying me along. Um, uh, and then the, I would, whenever I would show drawings, there would be these sort of gestural ugh, the vomit things. Um, and so I was like, oh, how do I get this hand, you know, this drawing hand that just, it's just expression but a complete mess, how do I get that hand to do anything um, where I can be sequential and tell a story and make sense of anything? It took a really long time. So when I started, a thing like this, a sheet like this would take me four hours, and when it was done, I would just be so sad. It would just be the saddest <laughs> little thing. And I, 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 I didn't know what materials to use or anything, but eventually I, I sort of started to figure out something. But um, to get from this, you can see this is a giant riotous mess, to something that looks like an organized page layout. Um, when I brought this to my graphic designer at the end, and I said, uh, you told me you could make this into a into a book, make make sense out of this. She just she was, she's just disgusted because <laughs> like this, you know that that looks like well we'll just put three layers, three rows, and it'll all make sense. But the problem was that I would do when I started, I would do some of them short like this, some of them would be long. You'll see some of them are this long, um, and so when you go to lay out a page, it was a complete wreck, um, so she had me redraw like a third of it um, to, so that it would fit into some idea of a page design. Um, and uh, that's, once that was all done though, we sort of formulated this uh, story here. Um, um, all, all of the work is based on um, a sort of um, reading that I've been doing. It started out, um, like I said, as sort of an investigation with comparative religion and um, then became more and more specifically about uh, Gnosticism um, and Western esotericism. Um, and I had all of these different stories that were showing up in my notebooks, were showing up in my paintings, but there was nothing connecting them together. And what I would find is that I would put up a show and I would have these paintings about these things that were so interesting to me. and. Nobody knew what I was talking about. There was no way anyone could have any idea that that was what I meant to be in the paintings because these are not things that people know about. They're not stories that interest people. And there's no way to connect to them. So, um, so they, so I would put this one thing on the wall, and then I had this other thing happen in discussion with people about the paintings. So, um, uh, once I started doing this, I thought, well, this would be a way I might be able to. Um, actually communicate some of those narratives, some of those stories that, that interest me so much. I think it's still just as weird and, and still is, looks strange and is alienating for people, but at least uh, maybe it's a step in the direction. Of this is what I'm doing now. So this is like a, a year and a half later. I just made this drawing, so I thought I would show this. So like, at some point, I started thinking about larger pages, page design, and thinking about 
tonality, thinking about how to build up images. I think I'm, I'm sort of uh, moving in that direction. So I just show some, this is things that I'm drawing now. I'm, I'm sort of moving on in that general, general direction of uh, making something work. Read the book yet? So yeah. I'm sure there's a reason for it. But can you talk a little bit about you know the difference between the the contour line drawings and then the the tone drawings? And so so sometimes there are little stories inside of stories, and, and oftentimes I I told those as a line drawing, like when um yeah when there's a story happening inside of a story, I let that be sort of more this hypothetical bare bones kind of line shape. Is that a story of things like you're talking about that emanating from within and something happening without? No, it's more like a guy's telling another guy's story. I'll just tell it in a line drawing, you know, so that uh, so that it reads as as language as something barrier. Scott, you talked about this being born out of a feeling of disconnectedness. Yeah. How does that feel now? Are what do you, you mean? More, are you, do you feel more connected to yourself? I'm, just, I, I'm a, you can see I have terribly awkward body language. I don't know how to relate. Yeah, I'm a neurotic person, but The that's, camera can't keep up with you, for one. I'm sorry. But uh, no, I mean, that it's, that's, I don't think you, you're just who you, that's, that, I'm not going to be a different person from making the work. I'm just going to be as much of a mess, but I, I make the work be about that, I guess. Do you have any different feelings towards it? Has it, has it affected how you view that? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, oh, you wanted me to talk about that? Uh, well, I mean, I think that the work oftentimes um, is sort of prophetic in that, in that whatever you're talking about inside the work is a few, is a little bit ahead of where you are personally. Like, so that uh, if you ask an artist what their work is about, it's a hard question for them uh, in the moment that they're making it. Because they're making it, because they don't know what they're thinking. They don't know what they mean. What's on their? They don't know what they're thinking. They have to make the work to figure out where they are in relation to the world around them. So you, oftentimes, you put that question to an artist, and you think, well, this looks very clear. This looks like it must be about something. They'll tell me what that is. And if they could tell you, then they wouldn't have to make the work. You know. So I think that the work is a little bit ahead of where I am, sort of personally. Yeah, so there's a lot of things that happen here, these little bits of imagery that I think, oh, this is what that was about. It happens all the time, but I think that happens for everybody with all their work, so. Yeah. Um, I often think of, um, um, when I talk to artists, I often think of how do they want to see that work yeah. um, live, right, or extend time, whether it's, um, in a gallery, whether it's in someone's house, whether it's framed, unframed, yeah. that kind of a thing. And I think that when I think of um, this piece over here, it seems to me edited to a gallery show. Right. But not. But then you've talked about it as a book format as so, well. So, so it's like, what is your vision for? Okay. So book? so I will uh, I will in the fall print some books. And I've already released it in a digital like, e-reader book for an iPad or Kindle or whatever. You can get it for any of those formats. But for a gallery installation, I like the idea that, the, that this Mobius strip that sort of precipitated the book and is the, the sort of format that shapes everything that happens in the book as being a sort of installation experience. I don't expect that this is a final form for it, but I thought that it would be a nice one to sort of um, express something about what was happening in the narrative. Yeah, uh, the, ultimately it will be a book. Thanks, Scott. Okay.